Yo, what's going on guys? I know you guys have been wanting this deck profile for a little bit of time now. Um, still working on the deck, making you know adjustments here and there, but I think I'm comfortable with the build that I have right now. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna showcase a couple combos that I think can be really good against our opponent. Um, I built this deck really to try and beat the number one deck in the format right now, and that's Fire King Sinful Spoil, or, or Fire King uh, Snake Eye, right? And Snake Eye also on itself is a pretty good deck. So this deck is really built to try and beat that deck. Um, so as we go through the deck profile, I'll go ahead and, and showcase some of the reasons why I chose the cards that are in the are in the deck. And obviously I think side deck is personal preference, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So first we're going to start with the main deck, right? We have the main staple of the deck, three sun, uh, sun Sea Loki, right? This card right here is the card that you want to see in your opening hand. Um, there's ways to get this card out with a special summon, and that's the ideal situation, of course, right? Because you can play around more hand traps that way, and you don't have to commit to your normal summon, but yep, this is the main card that gets your engine going, and uh, yeah, it is a villain and a monster if you're new to the deck. All right, we'll put that over here. The next card we're gonna have here is Lone Fire. Lone Fire Blossom is a card that you wanna see. It's another starter that you wanna see um, if you don't have access to Loki. So this card will get you access to Loki, and that's why we play one copy. You don't want to brick on too many because it is a normal summon. So I play one copy. Other uh, other builds might play more. Then you have your Sun Sea Twin. This card is needed in the combo. So um, you'll notice in the combo that how we utilize this card. Uh, it's a really good card. I think it's a one um, a one of. Of course, you don't want to pay more than one, and it kind of sucks to draw it, but you know you can play through that as well. All right, so that's it for the, the, um, the Sun Vide and the Sun Seed engine. Now we're gonna move on to our Aroma Age, or, or Aroma engine. So we have Rosalina here. Rosalina is a good card. Um, it is a one card starter as well to get to uh, a decent end board. It's not as good as the Sun Seed end board, but gets you to a decent spot in the game. Um, so it's not bad to open up this card at all. Also, it gives you life, so if you're in time, you know, you could just activate the effect, send to the graveyard, target an aroma monster in the graveyard, gain um, gain life points equal to half the attack for that monster. So this is a good card. Also, it's a tuner. So we, we do play one synchro in the deck. Um, so that's going to be interesting to showcase. One of the new support cards. Really good. Well, I should also mention, it, it's really important that uh, when this card gets special summoned, you can special summon another plant monster or aroma monster. That is a non-tuner from your deck. So you'll see that utilized in the combo. Then if we continue our aroma package, we have one Laurel. This card's just a common card, one one of. When, when it's sent to the graveyard, you could gain 500 life points. Also, um, if you gain life points, you could target one non-tuner plant on the field, and then it becomes a tuner. So uh, it's not really synchro heavy for this deck. You don't really play a lot of synchros, I only, I only play one. But I can see a variant where this becomes more utilized as a synchro deck. All right, the last card of the Aroma package is our Sanctuary. This card, um, believe it or not, is pretty pretty expensive now. It's going up in price. People are finding it in bulk and realizing that this is a vital part of the of the combo. So this common card is going, going up in price, so I'll pick yours up if you can. Uh, you can special summon this when your life is higher uh, than your opponent's from the graveyard. Also, it is a tuner. Um, just want to point that out. When you have this card in your hand, during either player's turn, you can discard it to the graveyard, gain life points of an aroma monster that you have in your graveyard, equal to the life, equal to the attack. So you can gain a lot of life off of this card. Also, it's, it's an extender. Uh, really good card to have in the package. I'm happy that we have it. Okay, now we're gonna go on to our Rika package. Um, I did make some adjustments with the ratios in this. So um, you're gonna notice here that I have one Ultra Princess <laughs> and two Commons. Um, obviously I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that and make them all Ultra because I think the Ultra looks really nice. So I'll showcase that. This card is good. Um, it's, a, it's a Monster Negate. If you have it in your hand or in your graveyard, 
The cost is to tribute a monster and shuffle this back into the deck. When you have Con Con out, you can shuffle, you can tribute one of your opponent's monsters and negate the effect by shuffling this into the deck. The tribute by, by uh, these Rika monsters are all costs. So if you use Con Con to, uh, to tribute one of their monsters, that is going to be a cost. So they're not going to be able to respond with that monster's effect or unless it activates in Graveyard by some chance. But I do play three of these. I think it's a nice extender as well. And um, I think it's one of the best Rika monsters. Next ratio I play is two, Mudon. Mudon is really good. It gets you access to your Con Con. That's how you get your, your Rika engine going. So this is going to be a primary target that you target off of your Jasmines that you'll see later. You want to add this to your hand. Special summon it. I usually use special summon mine in defense, but you know, whatever the circumstances are in that game. You add your Rika Spoiler Trap card. If you already have Con Con, you can grab a sheet. If you have both of those, you can grab a, a Glamour. You'll see those later in the deck video. Um, really good card, and you want to play it. It's also a special summon, so another extender possibly. Okay, last two cards in the Rika package. We have one Primula. When a plant monster is tributed, you can go ahead and special summon this card from your hand. It also has another unique effect where... You know, if you, you can target up to two plant monsters, you control and increase the levels by two until the end of this turn. So that comes up rarely. You're, you're really not going to use it for that. Because um, it's already the perfect level. It's a level four. And when you glamour, you usually search this. And if you tribute a plant monster, you search another card, which will be the Rika Princess that you saw, one of the first Rika monsters. And you overlay to your rank four, which is one of your best monsters in the deck. So one Primula, do not play more than one. The last card in the Rika, pro, pro, uh, the Rika part of this deck is Snowdrop. Snowdrop is another staple that you want to have in this deck. Snowdrop is really good. Um, you can go ahead and tribute your monster to go ahead and summon this card out with another plant from your hand. Then you can level modulate the monsters, the plant monsters that you have on the field, by targeting one plant monster you control. All the plant monsters become that target's level. So really good card. Um, also an extender. You can have two bodies for tributing one monster. So uh, it's good. Um, link climbing so you definitely need to play one you don't play without don't play the deck without this card okay so we're gonna move on now to a little bit of non-engine for the monsters um your non-engine believe it or not is very tight in this deck so uh we don't have much space to fit a lot of it in and i'm still experimenting with some some lines here uh so let's go ahead and show you these two cards it's gonna be Bur berea and regulus so I'm back and forth with these two. Um, there is a cool combo line if you open up Berea and any starter. Uh, you can go ahead and get an Omni Gate at the end of your field. That's that's a good you know addition to, to an end board, right? An Omni Gate is obviously what you want. So the only issue is you have to hard open the Berea. So running one is not ideal and the deck is already at 42 cards. So if you want to run three Berea, it brings it up to 44 cards. It kind of hurts consistency. But it could be worth it for an Omni Gate at the end of the at the end of the combo. And I'll show you that at the end. So yep, we have the Regulus here and the Berea. So possibly going up to three. I, I just gotta show you the combo. That's why it's in the deck profile right now. More non-engine for monsters is one cactus bouncer. Uh, you have a, several ways, I believe there's four ways in the deck to go ahead and uh, special summon your loci. Whenever you can special summon your loci, you can end on Cactus Bouncer. You have a lot of uh, searching in the deck with Glamour, with um, you search three times at Jasmine. It, it's insane. So you can always find access to this, back, this bouncer. And if, even if you hard draw it, it doesn't feel like a, a brick if you have the special summon for loci otherwise it is kind of a brick but um it's worth it because this is a floodgate your opponent cannot special summon monsters when i control another plant really good card that's going to beat any fire king deck they need to special summon so you play one all right and you're asking where are the hand traps you don't play many you don't have a lot of space for them but i think the hand trap of the format is the nibiru i think nibiru is the format um, the hand trap for the format, 
if you hit Fire King in the right spot and that's after Flame Birch brings out the two level ones from the graveyard, in my opinion, that's where I would uh, Nibiru. That is a, um, kind of a blowout for them because they have their links. They're expecting to, you know, Sunlight Wolf is fine. They can they can add whatever they need to, but their field and their gameplay is pretty much over that at that point. It turns off Princess if they already went to Princess. So I'm going to go with Nibiru for, the, for this format. I think it's just more impactful than any other for, uh, hand trap that we have. So, the Nibiru is there. Okay, we're going to move on to spells. We're going to go back to the Sunvine engine. Okay, so here's one of the ways you can special summon out your Loki is the one for one. Everyone should know what this card does. It's really old. But if you don't, summon a monster card from your hand to the graveyard. Special summon one level one monster from your hand or deck. So, this card is really good in a, in a number of ways. And I'm going to show you case that. A little bit later with the Therion package as well and how you can get your Omni Gate, but um while being locked under plants. But let's go ahead and move on. Next card, another way to special summon your loci is three unexpected die. This card is really good, right? You can read it right here. It says if you control, if you control no monsters, special summon one level four lower normal monster from your deck. That's a way to get your loci out. That's how you can end on a bouncer. Um so worth playing. You have four ways to get to special summon the loci. So I think the ratio of four to one is, is perfectly fine for me. Okay, we also have another way of special summoning, but this is kind of a soft brick. You don't really want to open this card, but you do want to play two because you can recycle your your one sun sunvine uh, or sorry sun avalon dryas. You can recycle it back to the graveyard now with one of the one of the trap cards. So you do want to play two. Also, you don't want to be completely blown out of your Sunvine engine if they stop one of these, right? So this gives you follow-up if somehow they break your board. You still have a sewing in deck and you'll still have a dryest in the graveyard. So you can do some things with that. So there we go. Sunvine sewing. Another cool uh, effect for this card is it protects your plant link monsters from destruction either by battle or, you know, by your opponent's card effect. All you have to do is banish it from the graveyard. Really nice effect. It comes up. Okay, we're going to move on to the Rika part of the spell card engine. So we're going to play three, or sorry, we're going to play two, Con Con. Con Con is the best Rika card in the whole deck, hands down. This card, you can tribute your, your Rika monster, um... So if you control a Rika monster, you can set a Rika Spower Trap from the deck to the field. You can use your opponent's monsters for your Rika card effects and tribute them if you're going to activate it. So this is really good with Princess because you can not only negate your opponent monster's card effects, but you can also tribute a monster on their field. It doesn't have to be the card you negate, but the tribute is cost, and that's why it makes this deck really good because they can't really respond to it. So that's Con Con. And you already seen it, but we have the Glamours. The Glamours also a really good card in this deck, man. You don't want to play this deck without Glamour. This card plus the Con Con, if you hard open both of them, you can easily out many boards and get a plus two, right? Because you you if you have the Con Con on field, you activate this card. Go ahead and tribute one of their monsters. Search two cards. That I that's a plus two, right? You use one card. You outed one of their monsters, and you you added two cards from your deck. So three minus one, which is the Rika Glamour here, two, plus two. Really great card, man. You have to play this deck. Uh, yeah, nothing much else to say. Some people get confused by the effect. Actually, I'll go over the effect quickly. Uh, so when you activate this card to search a Rika monster, it says right here... Uh, Tribute a monster when you activate this card. Add one plant monster with the same original level as that Rika monster. So the first Rika monster that you add, you can add an additional monster from your deck with the same level, but it has to be a different name. So people get kind of confused on that. That's the way you really want to explain it, is that it has to be comparable to the first Rika monster that you add with this card effect. Not the one that you attribute or or anything like that. That came up, to, that came up um, in one of my games. So I just wanted to explain that. Okay, and you have one Aroma Spell card that you're going to be playing, and that's going to be Blend. Aroma Blend is a card that uh, is really good. 
it has a cost to discard one card um but in my opinion it's not really a cost it actually adds to the combo so it's a spell card it came from the new set good thing about this card is uh you, you place exactly one human wins dried wins or blessed wins from your hand deck or face up in your field or uh, hand deck face up to your field spell and trap zone so spoiler alert we do play one of these cards um also the secondary effect is what really you what you really care about they're both pretty actually they're both needed in the combo but the second one is better you can banish this card if you have higher life benefits than your opponent you can fusion summon using plant monsters that are uh from your graveyard so obviously you're going to be using monsters in your graveyard majority of the time your life points are going to be higher than your opponents so it's a free fusion summon for an aroma monster and it's going to be the new one so really good card you only play that one though you don't want to brick on it Okay, now we're going to go on to kind of the soft brick in the deck. This card, like I said, the Theory on Package is still kind of experimental. Um, I'm wondering to see if it's worth playing or not. But for now, if we are playing the Theory on Package, we have to play this card. This card searches you a Theory on Monster from your deck to your hand. Also, it has a pretty nice uh, battle phase effect. Right, so it says here, once per turn, if your monster will be destroyed by battle, you can send one Theory on card or one Endless we don't play that card, but that other card from your deck to the graveyard instead. So you can send a theory on from your deck to the graveyard to protect one of your monsters. That's why it's also advantageous to play three uh, Lily Boria, right? And then once per turn, when a monster is destroyed by battle, which can be their monster as well, people forget about that, right? You can add, you can target one theory on monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Really good. Really good for recycling. Um... Just keeping it, keeping it live is really good. Only if needed. You really want your Con Con more on the field other than this card. But if you're in a situation where you need this card, it's really good. Okay, we have some more non-engine spots. Like I said, non-engine spots in this deck are really tight. So we're playing our Tactics Package. I opted to go for one thrust, two talents. The reason why I went for one thrust and two talents is because talents is really good, but the, the, the downside with talents is that you can brick on it. I've opened two talents before and it's just one card that in my in my hand that is useless, even if they activate a monster effect. So um, yes, I do want to see it. I don't want to see it tremendously often though. I don't want to see it multi in multiples in my hand. It happens more often than not. So I opted to go for two talents and one thrust. The thrust is in here is because if I open both of these, they're both live. Also, I do play cards in the deck that I can set off this if I open it going first. And it's, I think it's just an overall good card going first or second. Both of them. So that's the thrust package and the ta uh, triple tactics package. Okay, so more non-engine is you play the one called by. Um, no need for much of an explanation here, but called by. Okay, onto the traps. We only played two of them. First one is the Rika Sheet. You play this because it's, it's actually really good. Um, you can go ahead and tribute their monster if you have Kankan Con on the field to prevent a monster from activating their effect. And if you tributed a monster, you can take it. So if you tribute one other monster that they have, you can take the card that you're preventing from activating their effect. Really good card. If you're not going to tribute, then you, it's just kind of like an imperm. Kind of just stops them from activating the effect. Really good. Searchable as well. And the last card is the Blessed Ones. Um, the card is not tremendously great, but it does provide your monsters with attack points. And I'll tell you how later. It also provides you with a search. So inherently, I guess you can say that this card is not a neg. Um, also, you're searching it majority of the time. You don't want to draw this card. It kind of it, it will suck if you draw it. This is the, like the main brick in the deck. So there we have it. We have Blessed Winds. All right, so that's the main deck. Let's go ahead and go to the extra deck. We're going to start with our Aroma package, and that's going to be the new Link Monster, Aroma Lilith Rosemary. So when this card is summoned, you can search an Aroma card, and that's when you search the Aroma, the, the spell card, Aroma Blend. And also it has more effects, right? If you gain life points during the damage step, you can special summon 
up to three aroma monsters from your hand to your zones this card points to. So that effect does not come up often. I'm sure it can in pseudo circumstances, but does not come up for me at all. Only the first effect. But, you know, it also has follow-up. You know, if you're, if you're going second, it has this last effect that actually helps a lot. So you can tribute one monster this card points to. It doesn't have to be a plant. Then target one card on the field, banish it. And if you do, gain 1,000 life points. Pretty good. Pretty good card. It's a banish. So another good card against Fire King because you're not destroying their cards. You're just banishing it. And notice, I want you to notice here that it says banish target one card in the field, banish it. So that's really good against the Fire King Island. The next card, new card, is the Fusion Spell. We play one of this. The reason why I play this card is not because of uh, the other effects that are on the, on, the, uh, on the card, but the main effect that you care about is when your life points are higher than your opponent's. Plant monsters you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Okay? Once per turn, you can pay 2,000 life points, banish... Um, Vanish cards on the field equal to the number of Humid Winds, Dried Winds, or Blessed Winds you control. Once per turn, if you gain life points during the damage step, you can make all plants you currently control gain attack equal to the life points gained. So the the attack effect of this card does come up because you're going to have a Dried Winds. Um, and the other cards can, the, you know, the pay 2,000 life points effect can come up if you have this card still on your opponent's turn, um, which most likely... They're probably just going to win the game turn one when they see that they can't break your board. Um, but the main effect that you care about is the um, effect that where your plants cannot be destroyed by card effects. This card is unique. Circle of Fairies is the one synchro I play. Right, You're going to make this with your aroma package with your sanctuary. This allows you an additional normal summon. And just to keep things kind of short... That's how you normal summon your Cactus Bouncer if you normal summon already that turn. You would go this route, and you can normal summon Cactus Bouncer. Okay, the Sun Fine and the Sun Avalon package is relatively simple. You know, you have your one Dryas, your one Healer. You play one Melios. I still play Thrasher. And um, this is not the Sun Vine or Sun, uh, Sun Avalon package, but... We do play the dance piano on the Sylvan. Okay, so these are the links that you play. They're all good, and they will come up. All right, we also have the plant, generic plant support, which is the Aroma Seraphy Jasmine. It is an Aroma card. However, um, this generally helps all plant decks. You're going to play it regardless of what plant deck you, you just opt to go for. But, um, yeah, this, this card is uh, the one that dodged the... Uh, ban this and people were surprised about it because this card really does make the deck function um, So basically you contribute any plant that it points to Especially summon any plant from your deck to the field Also, if your life points are higher than your opponents any plants that this card points to cannot be destroyed by battle Okay, and if you gain life points you can search a plant monster from your deck to your hand and you If you notice it is a soft once per turn so it leaves the field and comes back You can activate it again for the only for the search effect so you really loop this. I searched three times during the combo for it. Bangle Lancer, another generic plant support. It's a quick effect. Bounce one card on your opponent's field. Or sorry, one monster on your opponent's field. And then you take the attack damage. Attack as damage to your life points. Okay, it has to happen in the main phase. So that's a little bit of a bummer. But if you have your Cactus Bouncer on the field and this on the field. And they try to normal summon the attack over the, the bouncer. You just bounce it. Okay. Um, other people are going to say, you know, what about Imperm and stuff? That's why I'm messing with Therion stuff. Because I do kind of want an, uh, an Omnigate at the end of the... An Omnigate at the end of the turn. Alright, so that's Bangle Lancer. Okay, now our X, XYZs. We have Strena, Rika Queen, and Hyperion. Okay, you could cheat these out with the Strena. Strena is good to add back your resources from Graveyard. Quick effect tribute. This is a negate. It would be on negate if you have um, trap spell and um, monster under it, but you're not gonna be able to get all three of them. Could I? It's I believe it's once per turn that you can activate. To let's see, 
During your turn, when you activate a card or effect, quick effect, you can target one monster of the same type, monster, spell, or trap in your graveyard, attach it to this card's material. Oh, okay. So I guess you can get all three of them under him at the same time, which makes him a pseudo army negate. But um, it's not reliable in this deck to get a trap under here. So I want an omni gate still for the evenly and still for the um, imperm. But those are your cards for the extra deck. And now we're going to move on to the side deck. The side deck is still a, working, a work in progress. But you're going to play cards like Summer Limit. If you can get your field established, this card is icing on the cake. Um, especially if they can somehow out your Cactus Bouncer. This card will pretty much seal the deal. This is definitely a win more card. Um, and you'll only side it in going first. But, I mean, this is the floodgate of the, of the format, right? People are still going to play floodgates. So why not utilize it to your advantage? The next card I'm going to play is arguably the second best hand trap in the format. I think Bell provides a lot of value this format. I'm signing it just in case uh, I just need additional interruptions on their turn. I don't want to see it in my hand going first because, uh, I mean, like, you know, when we're starting the game, because you don't know if this, this card is going to be effective against every deck. However, against Fire Kings, it's pretty good. It stops Flame Burge, it stops a lot of things. So I put that in my side just in case. Okay, this deck has a lot of long combos. So you're gonna be going into time pretty often. So you don't wanna just lose in time. So I think it's mandatory to play three Dogwood. I know a lot of people don't play this card, but with this deck specifically, your combos can be 10 minutes long, especially if they're, your opponent has to read all your cards. It is a plant deck that not many people, um, even before the new support came out, not a lot of people knew what the cards do. So to have this card in your side deck is needed, especially if some people are taking advantage of that time rule, because it will happen. This, dark, this card kind of just solidifies you the win if you ever have to go into time. And you draw, of course. Okay, now we're going by the rule of twos. I'm playing two anti-spell. This can conflict with the deck. I play mainly spells. So this is also kind of an option. If I'm playing against a deck like Manadium, I would definitely put this card in. Fire King, I would put it in, right? But I don't want to put it in against decks that don't really have spells. Like, I wouldn't put it in against the Labyrinth, of course. So I'm going to put it at two, just to save a spot in my, in my uh, side deck. Also, um, it can conflict with my own deck, so I don't want to see multiples going in my hand. Uh, okay, another two of is evenly matched. Evenly matched is a good card. Um, it always will be good. Uh, in this format, it's kind of unique. It, it's kind of awkward, actually. I don't really know what um, other matchups besides Fire King it's really impactful in. Of course, Labyrinth but that's only if they're already rolling. In the other deck, you know, Manadium puts up Omni Negates. So, uh, Voiceless Voice, this will be really good against Voiceless Voice as long as you can bait out the Guardian Negate, which you probably, most likely you would be able to. But I'm playing with two because I don't want to see multiples in my hand. And the last two cards from my side deck are obviously the Cosmic Cyclone. The Cosmic Cyclone is good. Um, this format... A lot of cards to hit off of this. You know, you have the Flame Burge going and, and putting cards in the Spell and Trap Zones. Cosmic. Uh, the Fire King Island. Cosmic. There's a lot of cards you can hit with this. So, it's mandatory in my opinion. Also, this could hit Voiceless Voice, the uh, the spell card that prevents you from targeting um, light ritual monsters or any light cards, light monsters on your field, on their field. You can get rid of that with the, the Cosmic Cyclone and continue to play. So... Cosmic Cyclone, really good. I don't play three, I don't want to see multiple. But yep, that's the side deck here. And now I'm going to get set up and get ready for the combo. Alright, time for the combo. So first combo, we're going to start off with just one Sunsea Genius Loki. And watch the board that this card can make, okay? So we're going to start with the Loki. We're going to go ahead and normal summon it. Then we're going to go ahead and leak it off. And we're going to go ahead and summon our Dryas from the extra deck. Okay? Our Dryas is going to go ahead and activate effect. We're going to go ahead and search the Sunseed, or sorry, the Sunvine Sewing. 
and activate the summon. And that's gonna go ahead and special summon the Sun Seed Genius Loka, uh, not Genius Loka, a, uh, what's this guy's name? Sun Seed Twin from the, from the deck. So we go ahead and special the Twin, All right? And then we take a thousand damage from this card if we do special summon. So this goes to Beerer, we take a thousand damage and then we go effect one, effect two. This card lets us gain back the thousand and special summon a Sun Vine Monster from the extra deck to the field. We're always gonna summon the healer. All right. And this card lets us bring back the Sun Seed Genius Loka from the graveyard. Okay, so this is the field right now. On summon, you gain 300 life, so now you're at 8,300. You're gonna have to link these two off. So go ahead and grab your Jasmine. Oh, sorry, hit the camera a little bit. Your Jasmine, okay? So from here, you go ahead and tree off the Sunseed Twin to go ahead and search for, where is it? Your Rosalina, okay? When you get your Rosalina out, you activate Rosalina's effect to go ahead and special summon a non-tuner or Romage monster from your deck to the field. So you're gonna go ahead and summon your Laurel. At this point, you're gonna link these two off you go into another Jasmine. All right, so you're in your, you're in your second Jasmine. Activate the Rose effect to go ahead and gain 500 life points. And that's gonna trigger these two. So now you're at 88, and you're gonna trigger these two to search two monsters from your deck to your hand. Okay. So the two monsters that you're gonna search when you're activating this effect is one, Mudan, and the other one is going to be Angelica. Okay. So now you have these two cards in hand in addition to the other four cards that you drew per turn. At this point, you're gonna go ahead and link these two so to the graveyard, to bring out a Rosalina. The good thing about Rosalina here is that it adds you the Aroma card. That's the card that you need to continue. So we're going to add the Aroma Blend to your hand. Okay, so as you can see, we have the Blend, we have the Mudan, and we have the Jalco. At this point, what you're going to do is go ahead and activate the Blend. You're going to be sending the Angelica as cost to go ahead and place Blessed Winds from your deck to the field. Move that away a little bit. Okay, so now you have your Blessed Winds on the field with your Rosemary and your Jasmine. At this point, your life ones are higher than your opponents, so you can special summon the Angelica from your graveyard to the field. Then, you're going to go ahead and link these two. Um, so I just see it's banished. Almost messed that up there. It's banished because you special summoned it, but you're going to link those two into Melius. Okay, Melius effect, and you grab back your Loki, special summon it. And then you're gonna link these two off into Fangle Lancer. Okay. You have your Mudan in your hand that you searched. You're gonna go ahead and tribute the Fangle Lancer, your Mudan, and then you're gonna go ahead and search your Rika Kan Kan. You're gonna activate Kan Kan in the field spell zone, which is over here. And then you're gonna go ahead and say Kan Kan effect, set a Rika spell because you control a Rika monster. You're gonna set Rika Glamour. Okay. At this point, activate Glamour, tribute the Mudan. To search two plant monsters because you can really monster. Same level, different names. So the first monster that you're gonna search is Primo. Then you can search another plant monster. It could be any monster. Same level but different name. We're gonna go with the princess. Now if you remember during the deck profile, if you tribute a monster, you can special summon this. So you're gonna activate effect. And then princess lets you special summon this card uh, just inherently. So special. Okay. At this point, go ahead and overlay. And I like to keep my link zones free. But we're gonna go ahead and overlay into Strano. And we're going to go ahead and activate the effect. Sends the graveyard to add a plant or a Rika card from my graveyard to my hand. Um, I like to go for Laurel just because you can extend because your life points are higher. So let's go ahead and grab. And you want your Rosemary to stay in the. You want your Aroma cards to stay in the graveyard for the fusion. But yep, let's just go ahead and add the Laurel. Doesn't really matter. You can add a Glamour if you want. You can add any you know, follow up. Just depends on the situation, but let's just stick with the Laurel. It's not going to change anything for the combo, whatever you add. Okay, from here, you can activate Sunsea Twin Effect in Graveyard which allows you to banish itself and a link monster that you control on the field to summon a link monster that has two copies of itself in the graveyard. As you can see, Jasmine has two copies, so we'll bring back to Jasmine. So have the Laurel in hand. Next part is you're going to do Blessed Winds effect to go ahead and shuffle a plant monster from your graveyard into the deck and gain 500 life. So you're going to go with the Dryas, put it back in the deck, gain 500 life points, so now you're at 93. And since you gain life points and this is a new copy of Jasmine, you're going to go ahead and search. So you're going to search a plant monster, that plant monster is going to be Sunjaw. All right. So you have your two plants in hand. If you search Glamour, uh, you would definitely need another plant in hand to continue. But I always just search the Laurel because it's just, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's go ahead and tribute the Strana. Special summon these two. Okay. Since Strana was tributed, you can XYZ summon. Okay. Now, you can 
for this combo, it doesn't matter what zone you put it in, for, but for additional combos, this does count as an XYZ summon, so you can go ahead and put it in the extra monster zone. And I'm just going to do that now for good practice. And we're going to summon our high Paraton. Okay? From here, I'm going to activate our Snow Drops effect, make all plants level 8, the ones that can be level 8. And we're going to go ahead and make summon this into a queen. Okay? You queen. Now, you're kind of wondering, like, you know, is that all? Is that all you're going to do? No, there's a couple things you can do now. First, activate your Bank Lancer by banishing uh, Link ratings that equal 4. So we have Melias, which is a 3. Healer, which is a 1, so that equals 4. And then, did you forget about the Rome card? No. You banish that to banish Rosalina and Primula to Fusion Summon your Magnolia. Okay. Now, the reason why this video is good is because, um, oh, and sorry, you're going to chain Hyperiton to equip a spell as a additional uh, option to negate a spell card. Okay. The reason why this is good is because you have a spell drop, I mean, a spell or a monster negate here, negate and destroy. You have a tribute here. Um, Jasmine doesn't really matter. It's kind of like a dead card here. It doesn't protect anything from battle because um, it doesn't point to a monster. But, you know, it, it's good. Whatever. Um, it's not really what you're worried about. You have the Bangle Lancer here for a quick bounce if they try to summon, and then you take damage of their attack. This card protects all your plant monsters from being destroyed by card effects. Okay? Another good thing about this card being on the field is you can activate this trip, this uh, chat card during the battle phase, shuffle back, you know, anything that you want into the graveyard, into the deck, and that's going to make you gain 500 life points, which makes all your plant monsters gain 500 attack. So, pretty strong field. I think this field is uh, underrated, but that's that. Now, um, instead of doing the whole combo over again for the Cactus Bouncer, obviously if you if you started with, you know, an Unexpected Die, which special summons your, um, your Loki, along the way you would search for your Bouncer, okay? Cards that you could, um, you know, it depends on your hand. If you choose the Bouncer, you could just normal summon it. Or if you want to uh, use the Rika, you know, the Rika Glamour effect, you can obviously search, you know, the Primula here, because you're going to special summon it, and then the Bouncer. You can do that, because you play three cards of this. You play three copies of, um, of Rika Princess, so hopefully you draw into this. If you don't, then you just go for this board, right? It's okay without Bouncer, but if you need access to Bouncer, this is another way to get to it if you have a Princess in hand already, okay? That's, uh, that's a good option, okay? So that's the board. That's the main bread and butter combo you want to go with. Now I'm going to try to showcase what an end board will look like if you draw hard draw the Borea, and you have access to Loki in some form, of that, some form of fashion. Okay, guys, this is a different avenue of what you can go down with um, when it comes down to comboing, right? So this field is going to end with an Omnigate, um, and it's up to you to decide what route you want to go on, um, depending on your situation, what deck you're playing against. But let's go ahead and get into it. Obviously, if this is our hand, you have to hard open the Loki or access to the Loki, and either the this Coliseum or Regulus, okay? Either one of those two. So first, you're going to go ahead and normal summon the Loki, okay? Then you're going to go ahead and link it off. For the dryas. You're gonna activate the dryas's effect. Go ahead and search. You're gonna search for the sewing. You're gonna activate the sewing. Okay, that's gonna get you your your twin. And then you're gonna go effect one, two. So off the two, you're gonna summon your healer. And then go ahead and summon back your loci on the graveyard. Okay, effect gain 300, so you got 83. Link these two off to go into Jasmine. And this is all standard, you just saw this, but we're going to go ahead and fast forward it a little bit. You're still going to get the Rosemary. Rosemary is going to get the Laurel. Okay, you're going to link these two off. The Jasmine. And then you're going to get five off of the Laurel, so you're going to get 88. And also, you get two searches, one here, one here. So, the searches that you're going to get are going to be the same. You're going to get the Mudan and Angelica. Okay? From here, the link into your... Rosemary. Okay, Rosemary is gonna search for you. Your blend. And then from here, you have a couple options. Okay, so you have this you have this calcium, this is your hand. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna activate this calcium here. You're gonna go ahead and grab Regulus, which is over here. Okay. So now you have your Regulus. You're gonna go ahead and activate Formal Blend. Discard the cost, Regulus. And you're gonna place the dried wins or the blessed wins from from here. This is in graveyard. You're gonna go ahead and activate Angelica. Since you have a aroma card in grave, you're gonna gain 18 life. So now you're at um, 80 plus 18. Then you're able to special summon Angelica because you have higher life points. Okay. From here, you go ahead and link those two into. Melios, which is right here. Then you're going to special summon back your little guy. Then you can link these two off into Bang Lancer. 
And then from here, what you're gonna do is tribute of the Mingle Lancer, bring Mood on. From here, you're gonna search your Con Con. All right, activate the Con Con, get rid of this Coliseum, and then activate the effect to set from the deck your weak spell, you're set into the timer. Okay, then you're going to, from here, Activate the glamour, tribute the mood on to search your Primula and Princess. Okay, activate Primula's effect special, Princess effect special, overlay those two into your Strono. Alright, you're gonna activate your Strono, you want your Princess in the graveyard, and you're gonna add back the Laurel. Okay. Okay, so what you're going to do from here is you're going to go ahead and activate your Sunsea Twins effect, Vanish, Vanish, to Special Summon, Jasmine. You're going to use Plus Twins effect to bring back your Drys. You gain 500, then you're going to search. Go ahead and search your Lily. Alright. Then from here, you have a couple of options. If, if you play no Discoliseum, you can go ahead and special summon the Lily. Tribute off. Is it tribute or is it summon? Sorry. No, not that. So what you're going to do here is continue with your Bangle Lancer, your Melios, and your Healer. Then you can go ahead and activate your Blend. I can really get Rosemary and your Primula. But I remember your Huge Mood on. Diffusion right here. And lastly, you can special summon your your Morea and equip Therion, regulus. So this would be your end board. You have Omni Gate, you have Bounce, and you have your Protection. Um, you also have your Princess Engrave to tribute this to bring the Hyper Tom back on their turn. Or the um, the Rika Queen if you want to do that. You don't really need this Laurel. You could have added back, you know, follow up like a Glamour or whatever else you would like to add. Depends on your hand, right? But this is the way you can end on an Omni Gate because this uh, Lily Berea adopts the Regulus effect and still end on, you know, the same amount of negates if not one more because you can go ahead and tribute this off with Rika Princess and bring back Hyperaton on their turn up here. And you can do it up here just because you want to save some space. Hyperaton. Okay. That's, uh, so there you have it. That's, that's another way you can play this board. Um, Depends on how your playstyle is, which one you want to operate with. Uh, I like I like both boards. I'm probably going to be using this one more often because the regulus. All right, thanks for watching. That's the deck profile that you guys have been asking for, and um, I'm out. Peace.